what life is like here once you're on campus and, and sort of integrated into our, our fantastic little community here. So uh, firstly, let me introduce myself formally. My name is Craig and I'm the Regional Manager for South Asia Recruitment for the University of Wollongong. Now, I've been with the university for almost 10 years, so I really have a great understanding of both the recruitment and admissions processes. So uh, at the end of this uh, presentation, we will take some questions and hopefully I can answer all those questions uh, really detailed for you if you have a better understanding of what you wish to do in the future. Now, obviously, the, the reason we're doing this whole thing virtually is because of the current pandemic that has sort of taken over the world. But it doesn't mean that life has to stop completely. And of course, the University of Wollongong was at the forefront of looking at ways to support our students, both onshore as well as offshore. Now, as I'm sure you're aware, and some of you probably have already started some remote learning. Now, if you come to the University of Wollongong and are uh, undertaking remote learning, we'll actually give you a 10% bursary or a 10% discount on your current fees. So while you're studying remotely, you will get a, a discount on your fees, which is a great incentive to, to get your studies started uh, straight away. So they can be ready for when um, borders reopen and classes do resume face to face. And the good thing about this bursary is it can actually be stacked with any other scholarship or bursary that you receive from the University of Wollongong. Um, if you are a new student looking to accept your offer with the University of Wollongong, I have a great news in we are accepting a $5,000 plus the overseas health cover as your initial uh, deposit payment. And with this $5,000 and overseas health cover, we'll be able to issue you with your COE. This means that you can start the, uh, the visa application process and get your student visa and start your studies remotely. Then, like I mentioned, once borders, international borders do reopen, you'll already have your student visa. You would have already integ uh, integrated into your class with your classmates and your lecturers and tutors. All you'll need to do is pack your bags and come straight to Australia. So a really great opportunity to pay a reduced deposit and get started with your degree. Now, what I always like to do for all my presentations is show a short video, which I guess really illustrates what life is like here on campus, but also in the great city of Wollongong. And also there's some uh, little, I guess, um, rankings and awards that will come up across there that show you really what a globally recognized world-class university that we really are. So I, I, yeah, I really hope that short video just gives you a, a 
a snapshot of what life is like here in Wollongong and how you really are committing to coming to a world-class university. Now, Wollongong as a city of 100,000 people with uh, fantastic beaches where all the services you as a student would need. But the great thing is we're only an hour and a half from the centre of Sydney. So again, while we are very, very close to Sydney and all that Sydney has to offer, we still are our own independent regional city. So being classed as a regional city, that has some fantastic benefits when it comes time to looking at your post-study work rights and beyond. The great thing about Wollongong is, again, although we're really close to Sydney, the cost of living here is substantially less. That's because we are a university city. So everything is just a little bit cheaper to really accommodate uh, the lifestyle that we lead here, as well as supporting all our students. Now, as an example of this, if you were to rent a three bedroom apartment in the, in the city of Sydney, you'd be looking at around $4,000 per month, approximately. For the same style of accommodation here in Wollongong, you're looking at around $2,000 per month. So that's quite a substantial saving in regards to uh, your rent and your food, and that's more money in your pocket. The University of Wollongong has over 35,000 student enrolments, with almost half of those being international students. So we really are a global university where your classroom will be filled with students from all around the world, as well as students from Australia. We have over 300 degrees on offer. And of course, we have our four international UOW campuses as well, which can be used as pathways coming to Australia. So for example, you could start your degree in our Dubai campus, and then transfer to Australia after your first year, as an example. We have some great scholarships available to all our students. Uh, at undergraduate level, we have our excellent scholarship. This is a 30% tuition fee waiver for high achieving students coming out of year 12. Uh, all our scholarships, by the way, are assessed by our admissions team at the point of application. So there's no extra paperwork, no different forms you need to fill out. All you do is submit your application and the admissions team will assess you on the spot for any available scholarships. Uh, when it comes to postgraduate scholarship, we can have a 30% tuition fee waiver for high achieving students coming from the bachelor's degree in their own country. And of course, if you study a bachelor's degree and want to continue with your master's with us, there's of course a uh, alumni scholarship as well. When it comes to our bursaries, which are very similar to scholarships, we have our list of undergraduate degrees and postgraduate degrees that qualify for what we call a country bursary. So if you are of say Indian citizenship, Nepali, Beng, uh, um, Nepali, uh, oh, sorry, I've just, <laughs> um, so if you're of Indian citizenship, yes, you do qualify for any of the uh, bursary that is covered by the undergraduate or postgraduate courses listed there on that page. When it comes to the accommodation and living here in Wollongong or living on campus, the options are really, really varied, which is great. So you may choose to have your all your meals made for you. That's perfectly fine. That's one option we have. Or we have where you would make all your own meals. That's also an option with shared kitchens or individual kitchenettes. Now, if you look at the map here on the right, um, we have a number of different options on campus. That's on the campus grounds. These, these are world-class accommodation facilities on the campus grounds. We also have another two or three uh, scattered out through our Wollongong CBD. Now, you'll also notice on this page is a red line and a blue line. These lines are actually free transportation that runs all day in the form of um, complimentary buses. Now, these buses run all day from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. at night, every stop, every 10 minutes. So that's, this means that whether you live on campus or outside of campus, you'll be on or very close to a free bus stop, which will transport you all around the city. It's very similar to a hop on, hop off sort of service, I suppose. Once you come in those, those front University of Wollongong gates, Everything you as a student would ever need is there on campus. So uh, when I say everything, I really do mean everything you as a student needs. So doctors, dentists, 
uh, hairdressers, post office, travel agent. Um, we have our uni bar, we have market stalls, we have our uh, fantastic gym, with the Olympic sized swimming pool, and of course our library, which is open 24 hours a day. Of course, doing your degree is really only half the, half the idea of coming to the university. You really want to uh, open up your career prospects for finish. And on campus, we have a unit called Career Central. And this whole unit's whole sole purpose is to help our students locate and, and find great jobs, both part-time work while they're studying, as well as some fantastic graduate outcomes once you graduate. Um, our graduates actually are ranked in the top 1% globally uh, by employee ranking. So we are really producing some of the best graduates in the world. Now, when it comes to looking for work, our Career Central team have on resources. So this is like an online jobs board where local and global employers will actually um, put job requests on the jobs board looking specifically for our graduates. We also have jobs on campus where I know many students are interested in finding work on campus that matches up with their uh, working timetable as well as the, uh, their study timetable and time with friends. We also offer work integrated learning subjects. So these are very much like internships or uh, work experience subjects that you can choose as electives. We'll get to go out into the real world and do some, get some real world first class experience. And of course, um, once sort of we become, I guess, further out of the COVID crisis, we will resume back with our career expos where again, local and uh, state employers come up with the sole purpose of wanting to meet our, all our students. And we can start that uh, relationship building at working so that once you do graduate, you're able to um, really keep the job market full on and, and have some great opportunities awaiting, waiting you. And of course, we also have some fantastic mentoring programs here on campus as well. Um, so that's it for me in regards to, I guess, Wollongong as a nutshell. It really is a fantastic place to study. It's a great place to live. It's very cheap and it's accommodating. We have a multicultural sort of society here in Wollongong where all our international students find part-time work really easily. And with the great benefit of having Sydney so close, we really are the, the best of all the worlds combined. So. Thank you for coming along today and I'm sure we'll be able to take some, some questions now. And um, I'm sure um, if you have anything you want to ask, please stick around and we'll be able to help you out. Thank you. Thanks, Greg. Uh, it was uh, very informative. You can see uh, everything so very nicely. Uh, hmm. Could you let the audience know about some benefit about uh, regional uh, because the student, the University of Wollongong is also in the you know, uh, Wollongong itself. It's mm -hmm. also coming up in the regional uh, New South Wales. So the benefit of uh, studying regional New South Wales and what's the benefit they're going to have for the uh, extra post-study work yeah. visa. Fantastic. Yeah, well, um, obviously, um, studying at, say, other city universities, uh, capital city universities, you will get two years of post-study work rights. But studying at a regional campus like Wollongong, you'll actually get three years of post-study work rights. So that's three years to really integrate yourself into a job, into some work experience and the, and the Australian culture. Uh, you also, I believe, get extra points when it comes to looking at PR. You also have access to a wider list of approved jobs on the jobs list. So they're just some of the benefits uh, that you can um, expect to have by studying here at a regional campus like Wollongong. The students are given one year extra uh, post-study work visa. That's exactly right, yes. Uh, right, so, so. Yes, that's a really great opportunity to, to take an extra year to, to stay in Australia and really hone your, hone your skills and your craft. Yes, so altogether the student can get the three years post-study work visa. Uh, if they study in the University of Wollongong, and that's normally if they study Sydney, Melbourne, Adelaide, any metrop metropolitan cities, mm. they get only two years post-study work visa, which is the 485. But wow. by studying in the Wollongong, the student get an extra uh, one year post-study work visa just because they're studying the University of Wollongong. So that's exactly the regional right. city. That's so absolutely. that's a benefit there. 
and also as a migration agent i'm just sharing this information uh, from the because i just uh, into dumas i'm uh, i'm a senior migration agent so just giving this info uh, as a migration agent uh, that uh, when you studying in the regional australia to complete two years of study recently 491 visa the new uh, the criteria is available now on the uh, research and development uh, that's nsw uh treasure site uh, who is looking after us for the nomination uh, the you can check over there that new criteria is required the student they studying the two years in the regional australia they can apply for the 491 uh, regional sponsored visa by state so that mm-hmm. way uh, is another benefit uh, we not promoting the migration but uh, is as part of the benefit that's that right. if they uh, they studying the regional australia so that can help so help if they in future they want to settle in australia so they can help in applying for the 491 regional visa by studying in university of wollongong so they meet the criteria for the 491 visa that's right yeah so and of course by by meeting and having discussion with blue sky certainly you'll be able to i guess really get into the the really important information regarding all that information and have a chat to blue sky okay that would be great so uh, there's a one question coming from one of these two in a chat box mm-hmm. that is unesco unesco longo is a public university it's a it's not a private university that's right we are a public public university yeah public university so i think we have a q and a we have a two question in q and a craig mm-hmm. uh, Uh, what are the requirement and process for afra registration after completion of their degree in australia okay so in regards to apra registration so that's that's nursing i assume that's the nursing yes. registration you're nursing. talking about yes um the university of wollongong will assist all our students going through the nursing program with their apra registration so although you may it, you know graduate with a bachelor of nursing the university of wollongong will still guide you and assist you with your apra registration so certainly feel comfortable that that's not something you really have to worry about until the end of your degree yeah that's a very good uh, initiative from university of longong that mm-hmm. the any student who's going to be study in at the uh, bachelor of nursing or the uh, graduate entry for the nursing at the university of longong they will be assisted by the university uh, university to get their afra registration so what are the assistance they require that will be given by the university and that uh, once you finish your degree from uh, university of longong is a pretty much a very straight forward process to get registered because the degree is itself a registered degree uh, with the afra you only need uh, either oit uh, equivalent to 7 each in ielts or the pte or the ielts itself or the toefl so if you mm-hmm. meet the english language requirement and plus the degree you can straight away get the afra registration to work as a registered Absolutely. nurse exactly right great so yeah please put your questions in the q and a or in the chat box and um i'm more than happy to to answer them today with you So don't be shy of it. So if you have any question and uh, if you have anything, you're more than happy to bring up the question here. I mean, if the even someone has the existing offer letter, if they have any doubts in their still in their mind, so they put they can put their question forward here, and we'll be uh, assisted to answer your questions. And, and otherwise, we can meet after the the Facebook Live, and we can have a, a one-to-one session if you wish. Yes, that that is also option. If someone wants to have a one-to-one session, so Craig will be more than happy, and we can organize the another uh, the fifteen-minute counseling for you, of course, uh, uh, for the, uh, whoever wants to have it one-to-one counseling. Okay, so uh, the question after completion of Master of Nursing in Wollongong. what is the registration process for apra now our master of nursing program our master of nursing program is called the master of nursing international but i have to be very clear that master of nursing international does not lead to registration here in australia so you would do better to look at uh potentially going back to our 
what we call our Bachelor of Nursing, but taking some credit from your prior degree, where um, basically you'll do a Bachelor of Nursing in two years, which then leads to registration at the end. It does seem a bit of a strange way to do it, but unfortunately our Masters of Nursing does not lead to registration. Um, during this pandemic situation, uh, how are the classes gonna be conducted? So at the moment, the classes are conducted remotely. So that means um, you'll be doing lectures and tutorials remotely, uh, as well as exams, etc. all are all done and, and moderated at a remote level. Um, we really are hoping that in uh, autumn session or February session 2021, we will be looking at more of a potentially blended model where students who are here on shore already will start slowly but surely at starting to attend classes again at a socially distanced um, sort of level. And obviously with the, with the main hope that by as soon as possible, we will start being able to welcome our international students back on campus again to start attending classes again. But at this very moment in time, uh, uh, I think 95% of our classes are done remotely. Uh, Vani's asked, do masters require work experience? That's a great question. Um, the main degree that I can think of that does require work experience is our MBA program, which does require three years of relevant managerial experience. All our other masters, so masters of engineering, masters of business, um, IT, computer science, etc., those degrees have no requirement for work experience. You can be a fresh graduate who's just graduated your bachelor's degree and you can come to Australia and start your master's degree. That's some good questions. Ah, uh, yes, so in regards to distance learning, uh, the Australian government has made it very clear that um, distance learning is acceptable in regards to the long-term plan of post-study work rights. So that means that yes, you can study some distance learning as part of your whole, I guess, overall degree. And look, things are looking very, very positive, especially here in Australia, that we will be welcoming international students, I guess, I guess sooner rather than later. And by studying one semester online or remotely is not going to affect your chances of post-study work rights at all. Uh, placements in campus. So uh, the question is, can we get placements in campus? I assume that means potentially jobs on campus. If I'm wrong, please, please let me know. But um, like I said, we do have jobs on campus. But uh, in regards to, I guess, um, medical placements, if you're talking about nursing, et cetera, if you do a Bachelor of Nursing, you do have placements and they are organized for you prior to you even arriving. So once you arrive on campus and start your degree, your placement has already been uh, assigned and organized on your behalf for you. Yeah. And of course, like I said, jobs on campus, yes, we have a jobs board where um, different units and faculties and divisions on campus will, um, advertise for assistance um, and helpers and all sorts of different levels of assistance they need. And then they can go out to students and students can apply for those jobs. Um, IELTS requirements vary depending on which program that you're looking for. So if it's a Bachelor of Nursing has higher IELTS requirement than say a Bachelor of Business. Um, what I recommend is to speak to your consultant at Blue Sky where once you figure out which program you're really interested in studying, which you know what the IELTS requirement for that program is. Uh, Tanu says, I did a bachelor in English with 60%, but unfortunately from distance learning. Uh, so in regards to your options, I would certainly recommend that again, you speak to your counselors at Blue Sky, who can then uh, guide you on the best way forward um, we do um, have instances where we do accept distance learning. We would need to see your transcripts and, and have the, the official, uh, I guess, advice and support from Blue Sky as well. That's great. Well, seem to have a few great questions there. Ah, Rakta, sorry, missed that one there. Um, we do have a number of different um, prayer spaces and, and places on campus for different 
denominations of, of religion. Um, certainly there are, yeah, there are Hindu temples, Muslim mosques, all scattered through the sea as well, where anyone of any, any belief can, can find a place to, to work. It's, it's certainly, like I said, it's a very multicultural city, Wollongong. So um, no matter what your beliefs or what your, what your thoughts are, there will be a place for you here in Wollongong. Yes, yeah, so we have a question regarding PhD programs. The process for PhDs is a little bit different than your standard, I guess, postgraduate or undergraduate application. What we'd ask you to do is to first locate a supervisor who has the similar interests to you. And this can be done when you type into Google UOW scholars. There you'll find a list of all our academics and you can start doing some search function sort of ability where you can type in the, the topic that you're interested in. And this will bring up academics who are researching very similar things to that. And you can approach them and discuss your research proposal, your academic history. And once you've sort of started a relationship with that uh, academic, you can then make your application through uh, your trusted agent at Blue Sky. Uh, yes. Craig, uh, Craig, about the PhD one. Yes. Uh, I do have a few inquiries for the PhD. Okay. The, is there any uh, the targeted area the university is looking for the research? So we probably can uh, share among our offices uh, for that mm -hmm. one. As with the, we have some applicant who have in Scarborough the targeted area for the university, so they can it's easier to find them. Uh, the the supervisor. Yeah. So again, I would always recommend using that UOW Scholars page. But in regards to anything specific that they were researching, Wollongong is a very research intensive um, and well, you know, well known university for our research outcomes. So we are researching many, many things with all different faculties. So it would really depend on what the student is interested in researching and doing their doctor of philosophy on. Um, I'm sure there would be someone on campus doing something similar or, or exact that. Uh, we do offer scholarships to Sri Lankan students. Uh, scholarships open, so the graduate ex the, the excellent scholarships, the 30%, as well as those um, those bursaries I was mentioning as well before. They're available to Sri Lankan students. Um, so we have a student who has completed one year of graduation from university in Malaysia. Can you get transferred to Wollongong? Absolutely. That's a great question. Um, and you do that by making an application the same method as you would. So you would speak to Blue Sky and they can get you transferred here to Wollongong. Um, in regards to gap, except after sort of you, you know, you've done your bachelor's degree and you have a, a gap, depending on what you did during that gap time will depend on what happens, I guess, with your application. Uh, if you are working in the, the industry that your, your bachelor's degree is in, it's completely acceptable. Um, certainly with all those sort of questions where you're unsure sure where the gaps or things like that, always speak to Sky and, and make, a, make an application so at least our admissions team can review your application thoroughly. Um, so I, uh, what about the eligibility to enroll? Yeah, so um, we, uh, uh, Sri Lankan students are able to enroll in any program that they are academically um, accepted into. So there's no no sort of courses where we don't accept Sri Lankan students. Um, we have a great, fantastic Sri Lankan population here on campus. And it's a very popular camp campus for, for our Asian students as well. Okay, so we're getting some very, very specific uh, program questions here, Shaya. So maybe we'll take this offline now and we can do some one-to-one -one counseling, I think. I think, yes, I'll just... I'll just ask the uh, if she can uh, willing to for any postponed course without match. Okay, I can ask the uh, uh, the from the attendee if they would like to have the one-to-one -one counseling. So what we can we can organize a one-to-one -one counseling. 
so uh, please uh, text your uh, the interest so we can organize a one to one counseling uh, with absolutely. ukraine absolutely that would be great so that well, way you can ask your uh, your uh, your case specific questions that's right and yeah. that can assist you better way it's a very good idea because that way i can spend some time with with, with each of you and, and really look into what you're asking yeah. and we can get some more detailed questions and that you're looking for. So, all right, well, to all our people out there in, in Facebook watching live now, thank you for coming along. And, uh, like Shayez has said, please uh, let us know your interest if you'd like to have a one-to-one -one session with me where we can get a bit more uh, detailed information from you and I can and I can definitely have a, a great chat to you one-to-one. -one. Let me see if you have any comment on... I think we can stand by uh, Craig and uh, mm -hmm. what we do that if anyone requests us for the one-to-one uh, -one session so we can uh we can uh, connect you with the uh, with the one to one counseling details so Fantastic. i can just uh, text the details to you then you can log in from there okay great so we have cousin date plus two in twenty still he can apply for bachelor program yes uh tanu the uh, if uh, this plus 12 there's a significant gap in his uh, uh, after finishing year 12 so going back to history after eight years uh, he has to have the strong reasoning or the, the work experience which he was doing it so maybe the question is maybe it's not the uh, the, the show one whether he will be able to get the admission because there is a significant gap eight years gap so we have to make sure mm -hmm. the in a gt that what he was doing for all these years and if it's a genuine reasoning and he can explain better in his uh, in his uh, uh, in his GT statement and with the evidence yes probably yes but it's a it's a, it's a very difficult to say at this moment whether he will be accepted because there's a huge mm. gap as I can see that's right how much gap do you usually accept after a bachelor <laughs> uh, look, after bachelor, I will say, Craig, if the student is working in a professional field, so as long as he's working in his professional field and when he wants to do the master, he can justify why he wants to do the master. We don't have any issue in accepting mm. him. No, that's absolutely right. Absolutely correct. But work experience should be that he can uh, make sure that he can... Uh, he can prove uh, by uh, that he was providing working. job certificates and, and, yeah, and the bank statement where the salary was absolutely. credited. So, cash uh, payment uh, will not be accepted. <laughs> That's where we find difficult sometimes in uh, justifying it to the immigration and for mm. the GTA purpose. Absolutely. All right. Well, I will go offline now, uh, Shaya. So that's all right. Otherwise, yes. we'll be Facebook live sort of trying to oh. answer these little questions. So we'll jump off Facebook yeah. and we can answer these questions a bit more okay. uh, thoroughly. Okay. Yeah, that will be good. Uh, Sandeep, can you please uh, put uh, Facebook live off? Yes, sir. Yeah. Now we are, uh, we are off from the Facebook. Great. It's a little hard sometimes on Facebook live to answer.